Hey guys, Richard Holden here, and welcome to the channel. We got compound boost for you today. We have a turbo on top of a blower on our 4.3 liter V6 junkyard motor. Let's check it out. In this video, we're going to do something very cool, and I'm talking about really cool adding a turbo on top of a motor that's already supercharged. We have our 3800 Series 3 V6 motor with a factory Gen 5 M90 supercharger. To that, we're going to add a GT45, the low buck eBay turbo, with an air and water air cooler. Turbo boost blowing into blower boost. Awesome stuff along the way. We're also going to do another test. On the supercharged combination, we're going to compare pump gas to E85. And on the turbo compound setup, we're going to compare race gas to E85. Lots of cool stuff. Let's take a listen. Right into our compound boost test we also have other tests going on while we're doing this so we're going to add a turbocharger to the already supercharged combination but along the way we're going to do a couple of tests on fuel in this case we're going to run the supercharged combination with pump gas and the associated timing that goes with pump gas and e85 which as we know on a supercharged combination especially one without an intercooler e85 definitely the way to go so let's take a look at our 3800 series 3 l32 v6 the one we got from the junkyard take a look back if you haven't at parts one and two of this series you'll see that we had to redo the cylinder heads we had to do a valve job and put new seats in it to upgrade the cylinder heads to make sure that everything worked after we did that the motor worked fantastic we also did upgrades in part two. We did pulleys and tested headers and an air intake and all of that stuff worked out very well. But now it's time this motor is back in stock trim, meaning stock blower, stock pulley, stock throttle body, no air intake, stock exhaust. And we ran this thing on 91 octane pump gas to start out with. So here's what we got running our junkyard motor with rebuilt heads as you were 291 point or 271.9 horsepower and peak torque is 279.6 so 271 horsepower 279 foot pounds of torque on pump gas on this combination guys are going to want to know what kind of timing did you run on 91 octane pump gas we started out at 15 degrees and rose to a maximum of 22 degrees the reason that we're able to get away with that is we're running the motor about 140 degrees it has cold air obviously from the dyno cell we have an open exhaust we have no restrictions on the exhaust or the inlet side so all of that stuff combines to allow us to run more timing on the dyno than you probably would on the street but here's what happened when we added E85 to the equation. You see, we picked up quite a bit of power. This is especially important on supercharged combinations, especially root supercharged combinations with no intercooler. It really likes E85. It's definitely the way to go if you can get it. So run with E85. This combination produced 289 horsepower, 293 foot pounds of torque this thing would go up to 291 or 292 horsepower when we added another degree we added we raised the let's take a look we raised the timing on the e85 combination from 15 and 22 up to uh 23 or 24 degrees at the very top we also raised the starting point by two and a half degrees so we were at 17 and a half to 18 degrees down here down at 3000 rpm and rose to a peak of 23 and a half or 24 degrees at the top so e85 made power all by itself it also allows you to add more timing which in indeed makes even more power so e85 on a super supercharged combination definitely the way to go now let's take a look at what happened when we ran our turbo on top of the... Lower. 
Now that we demonstrated the change in power offered by E85 over pump gas on our supercharged combination, let's see what happened when we added our turbo. Now remember, this is a GT45 turbo from the guys at DNA. It's the low buck turbo that we always go to. We had an air to water intercooler between the turbo and the supercharger, although no intercooler under the supercharger. As I said, unfortunately, I did not monitor charge temperatures. The boost for the turbo was regulated by a wastegate. Now we took the reference line for the wastegate, and this is very important. We took the reading between the turbo and the supercharger. If we take the reference reading for the wastegate under the supercharger, the supercharger already makes more than seven pounds of boost. So it's just going to open the wastegate immediately. So we had to make sure we took the reference between the turbo and the supercharger to open the wastegate at seven pounds. So effectively the, super, the turbocharger is providing seven pounds of boost to the supercharger, which obviously makes the supercharger a lot more efficient, and we get more power. We've got an intercooler also between the turbo and the supercharger. Here's what happened when we added this. We're as usually as usual, we're running the uh, Turbo Smart 45 millimeter hypergate on this thing. We had a single one, and the the other thing that made this attractive is that the turbo and its exhaust, which was three and a half inches and the, the pipe and the wastegate and all that stuff was already hooked together, ready to run from another test. So it made it easy to install because you see the way that we had the exhaust done, we just put a three inch V band on the exhaust and all we had to do was hook this turbo setup to it. So it was really easy to install. We had uh, Troy from West Tech welded a drain fitting and we just had a feed fitting for the turbo. All of that stuff was very simple to hook up. The thing that took the most time was running the plumbing from the turbo to the inner core and then over to the inlet of the throttle body into the supercharger. Here's what happened when we installed the compound setup, adding seven pounds of boost from the turbo to our supercharge combination. Now, again, it's important to note that this was run on, we did not run this combination on pump gas. The, the boost pressure is too high. It's way over 20 pounds on this combination. And I decided to just start out with race gas. So we run 110 octane race gas on this combination with the turbo supercharged compound setup we ran timing started out about 15 or 16 down low and rose to a peak of 18. we had a rising boost curve which we'll talk about when we go over all the boost curves on this combination so run with our compound setup and race gas we made 446 horsepower and 300 or 437 foot pounds of torque so it did really well it added a lot of power to our supercharged combination which is kind of what we would expect here's what happened when we then replaced the race gas with e85 just like before when we we had done the supercharged combination e85 always helps that picked the power up to 479 horsepower and 465 foot pounds of torque so the thing was doing really well that made a lot of power. We tried adding an extra degree of timing on the E85, and this is what we came up with. It worked very well. We, we ran 19 degrees, but only from 5,500 on up, and it did improve power a, a little bit, not a ton, but obviously the compound setup was working very well. It added a lot of power, but you can see I'll bring up the, the run that we ran with the E85 on the supercharged combination down low. E85 on both combinations made a big difference in power. It made a, an even bigger difference at a higher power level when we had the compound set up. Compound turbo supercharging was awesome. It worked fantastic on this motor. We ran over 23 pounds on this combination and it just kept going. Once we fixed the cylinder heads back in part one, this motor has run perfect and flawless run after run and I have to say it's getting to be one of my favorite junkyard motors. Now let's take a look at the boost curves offered on all of these combinations. Now let's take a look at the boost curves offered by the supercharged combination and the compound turbo supercharged combinations. This is pretty interesting stuff. So this is the boost curve supplied by our M90 supercharger, the the Gen 5 blower on our Series 3 motor. I thought it was interesting that it started out at less than five pounds and rose to a peak of 10 pounds. It doesn't surprise me that we have a, uh, a rising boost curve toward the end of this, which we often see on positive displacement blower applications, especially ones with stock camshafts that don't really work very well at higher RPM. So the motor becomes less efficient and we see that as a rise in boost pressure on these combinations. What did surprise me is how low the boost pressure was at the beginning of the run. I thought it would be a little bit higher uh, by another pound or so or, or two um, at the load in. 
Now we looked around for leaks. I even uh, capped the EGR passage. We monitored the valve or the bypass valve. We even stood in there to make sure that it was operating the way it's supposed to. We took the blower off, make sure it's not leaking. We did all of that stuff and I, and I cannot find yet another leak or anything that's going on. This is what, it provides this curve run after run after run. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I expected there to be more down low, but this is a curve it supplied. Here's what happened when we added the turbo to this combination. You can see that the boost is up quite a bit. In this case, it's, it's just over 22 pounds. So we went from 10 pounds at a peak to a little over 22, although note that this is at a slightly lower engine speed. When we ran the E85, maybe that's a better one to take a look at. When we ran the E85, we ran it to a higher engine speed. So we're, we're at 23.3 pounds of boost at uh, 6,000 RPM. 6,000? Yeah, 6,000 RPM. So we jumped up from 10 pounds uh, and, and actually a little under 10 pounds at 6,000 up to 23.3 pounds with the compound setup. Remember, we had the turbo uh, waste gated with the spring and the waste gate set for 7 pounds. So we're assuming that the turbo is supplying 7 pounds between the turbo and the blower. And I know guys are going to comment about that and I want you to tell me what you think. Here is the uh, <laughs> thing that strengths and strengthens my opinion about this is I've run this compound setup before. I did it with the guys at HP Performance. We ran twin turbos feeding the factory Eaton supercharger on an O3 Cobra motor. They were waste gated to provide seven pounds of boost and that's exactly what they did in that combination. The interesting thing also is on that combination the blower was making about 11 pounds. We were providing seven pounds and that combination produced boost pressure uh, examples just like this. It made 22 pounds or so on that combination. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> that the turbo was supplying a, a, a kind of steady seven pounds of this combination, but we see a rising boost curve that is a function of the rising boost curve of the supercharger. Very cool stuff. I wish that I had charge temperatures and back pressures and stuff to go along with this, but it shows that the compound turbo supercharging stuff does work. It shows the change in boost. It shows that our, e or, or our GT45 turbo was sized very well because you can see even down at 3,300 RPM, we had more boost. We had 12 and a half pounds or so um, as opposed to less than five pounds. So the turbo was already working and making the boost that it's supposed to be making because like, we see that as a, about a seven pound difference, meaning the wastegate's working there. So what can we do? Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from our little adventure adding a GT45 turbo and air-to-water intercooler on top of our 3800 Series 3 L32 supercharged junkyard V6? Obviously, awesomeness. Compound turbo blower stuff always works. It's great stuff. But there's a reason to do it, and there's also a reason not to do it. If you're trying to do maximum power, just put a turbo and or turbos on your naturally aspirated combination, turn the turbos up and you can make more power. But the cool thing is that we didn't really employ it in this combination. If you add a supercharger or have a supercharger on your combination, you can spool up a larger size turbo much better because effectively your naturally aspirated motor is making even more power with boost. On our combination, we saw a rising boost curve. We saw adding seven pounds to our 10 pounds of supercharged boost re resulted in like 23 pounds of compound boost. Always cool stuff. Always fun to do compound boost on any application, including our 3800 Series 3 V6. I have to say, one of my favorite motors now. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up. We got cams, we got heads, and we got all kinds of cool stuff. Stick around.